station is Salt Cellar Lane. Previously on Last Stop. What's wrong with my dad? Jesus! You've stolen my body! We're both in exactly the same situation. There's got to be some cause, some connection between the two of us. You've swapped brains? Yeah. Okay. It'll look too suspicious if I'm alone with Molly. On Monday we're going to have to cover for each other. I'm going to have to pretend to be you, and you're going to have to pretend to be me. So what's the plan? The only way this is going to work is if we imitate each other exactly. It's got to be perfect, right? So good that even my own mother wouldn't know the difference. All right, Danny Ocean. Let him finish. This sounds fun. First order of business, 7.30 a.m. Run with Amy. Amy's got a mind like clockwork. She is a stickler for punctuality. If you're even a minute late, she'll suspect something's up. That sounds like an exaggeration. You don't know Amy. Jack loves Amy. We do not. Have you both finished? Let's review the itinerary. 7.30 a.m., run with Amy. 7.50, visit coffee shop. 7.52, order skinny caramel macchiato, no phone. 7.53, consume beverage. 7.55, put head in microwave. 8.15. Buy Molly a new mobile phone. Okay, now he's messing around. So, I meet Amy. How do I explain what happened yesterday? First, you'll have to put her completely at ease. She's a bit of a detective or something, so don't be all nervous, all right? She can smell fear. Just be super casual. Okay. So I just go up to her and say... All right, love. Pardon? Dad, no. Try and bring it into the 21st century. Look, just distract her somehow. Talk about something she loves. We're out of cereal. What do you want? Cornflakes? Focus. Look, Amy's a big theatre nerd. She can talk for hours about various plays she's into. It's incredibly boring. She's also been saying she fancies a holiday. Distract her with that. Holiday, theatre, got it. So, seen any musicals lately? What was the deal with that piss the other day? How come you're hanging out with fat middle-aged blokes? I wouldn't call him fat. Some people say he's very handsome. So are we going for this run or what? I always think of him as meat and potatoes. You know, no fuss. Some people say that's a rare quality. Keep up if you can. Wow, I feel great. I've not been able to run like this in years. You spent enough time on the treadmill. Oh, I imagine I come across quite self-absorbed. Well, you're no role model, but I wouldn't beat yourself up too bad. What do you mean about me not being a good role model? Enough with the chit-chat. You're giving me a stitch. Come on. Let me hear it. What is it that makes me such a bad person? Bad person? You're harmless. I just said you don't set a good example. You're just like me. You're a total workaholic and a massive geek. A massive geek? Not too bad. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, Jack. That was great. I feel fantastic. So, when can we do this again? What's going on with you? You all right? 
What do you mean? I've never felt better. I'll call you tomorrow. No, it's fine. I'll call you. Take care of yourself, okay, Jack? We'd better get our story straight for Shaz. Shaz is great. You're going to love her. Hang on, what do you mean, story? Well, um, you may be surprised to learn. It turns out, you and me are related. Huh? Welcome to the family, Jack. I was just talking to John about his mysterious cousin. All right, cuz. You know, I don't tell you this nearly enough, but you are definitely the handsome one in the family. That's unlike you, John, to give out compliments like that. It's just not your usual style. So, now your family secret's out, I'm dying to know more. What was it like growing up with John as your cousin? Can't complain. You know, John, a total gent. Always has been. That's kind of you to say, Jack. But I would only add that it was made easier by you being such a kind, considerate, patient, intelligent, handsome young man. So how long's Jack in town for? Oh, not long. For the foreseeable. Just a few days, really. <laughs> He's only joking. I'm actually not. Sounds like you both need to get your stories straight. Where were you before you came to London, Jack? Uh, just here and there. He was in Cambodia. Wow. Cambodia. Yeah, he was working for the UN. You know, peacekeeping. Noble stuff. Not that glamorous, really. Mainly just cleaning toilets and making coffee. He's done well for himself. Now he runs this high-tech startup you see selling solar-powered submarines to the super-rich. Yeah, I almost can't believe it's true. Well, that all sounds fascinating. I hope life isn't too slow-paced for you while you slum it with us. Well, I'm going to head off, John. Don't be too late. Cheerio. See you later. She's nice. Submarines. Too much. So what is it that you do for a job anyway? Are you a taxidermist? A taxidermist? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a creative. I work in design. I'm an artist. Taxidermists are people who take animals and pull out their insides and make them stand up and things. It's awesome. You having me on? An artist? Doing what? So hard to believe. I work in the interactive medium. You know, video games. That's so cool. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, not not traditional games like shooters or RPGs or free-to-play stuff. My team makes empathy games. It's art, really. You know, games which say something about the human condition. Cutting-edge stuff. Uh-huh. I played this game where you had to run really fast over a road. Only I didn't, and I got hit by a train. I died. There's one we have at work on a screensaver where you navigate through a maze. Did you do that one? Uh, no. That wasn't me. Did you make that one with the train? No. No, I didn't. Sorry. You should have been a taxidermist. So where do you work? Super fat. It's not far from your office, actually. So what does a computer game person do? Play games all day? Sounds pretty easy to me. There's a little bit more to it than that. Dad, can you put me in one of Jack's video games? Could I put Molly in your game, Jack? Is that even possible? Let's just try to get through the first day to begin with, yeah? I'll walk you through it. Don't forget, I need to be taken to school at some point. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, first you need to find my desk. You can't miss it. It's the one with the robot doing the sick dab. Sneak past Sonia, the receptionist. Avoid any awkward questions. She's a bit dippy, so you shouldn't have any problems there. She didn't sound that dippy on the phone. You're mean, Jack. How old are you, anyway? Eight and a half. Good age. Why? Don't know. Hello, stranger. You look well rested. Uh, thanks. You do too. Thanks. Get in there, Jack, my son. Good morning! Derek's in a good mood. Right, Derek. Yeah, the office clown. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that. He'll have you fired. Right, <laughs> yeah. I'm completely not with it this morning. I should probably get going. Hey, you never told me how your holiday was. Oh, warm, balmy, great sunbathing weather. You should see my turn. In Iceland? Okay, well, I've got to run. Keep on keeping on. Uh, bye. So, what do I do when I get there? It's Monday. That means sprint planning. You're going to coordinate with your team on their tasks for the week. That's not good to stuff like that. Thanks for the encouragement. It's simple, trust me. Jonah's working on modelling the last of the cream cakes for Mrs Clapton's tea shop. Letitia's putting the finishing touches to the AI for the retirement home scene with the shell shock veteran. And Tobias is writing up the design for the interactive funeral procession. And Maya is midway through implementing rumble support. You may as well be speaking German. Your game sounds bad, Jack. It's about embodying the experience of someone who's witnessed death and is coming to terms with their own mortality. It's poetic. It'll make you cry. Jonah Cakes, Letitia Shell Shock, Tobias Funerals, Maya Rumble. See? You're a natural. Uh, hello. Um, good weekends, everyone? Get up to anything interesting? No. Okay, um, let's see. So, I'm supposed to go around everyone and check what you're all working on. So, um, Jonah. Are you rumbling? Uh, no, sorry, maybe that's not right. Okay, Letitia. You're doing something with AI? No, no, IA for retirement homes. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, Tobias. I believe you're looking at a funeral procession. Good luck with that. I'm going to assume that's correct. And finally, Maya. You're rumbling. Rumbling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Look, even I can tell this meeting is a bit pointless. You all know what you're up to, even if I don't. I guess what you're really looking for is a pep talk, isn't it? Some words of encouragement. I'm sorry. I thought I could do this, but none of this comes naturally to me. You all look like nice, bright people. 
You don't need to listen to an old fart like me. I'm sorry that I can't give you anything more inspiring. Maybe I'll just leave you with the advice that my dad gave to me on my 18th birthday. Keep your head down. Don't take unnecessary risks. Stay out of debt. Cheers. Come on, baby. Tell me now. Give me that Derek Lovin'. Yes, yes, yes! Hey, yo! This is ridiculous. What the hell? Headshot! Come on, Jack. Let's have our catch up. Okay. Jack, I'm loving that TV series you recommended. Did you catch the latest episode? What did you think of the chapel scene? Oh, yeah. Very poignant. That the Lord forgives, I do not bit, and then he pulled out the machine gun and was all... <laughs> blew that bugger's chin clean off. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was my favourite bit too. Jack, I'll cut right to it. Your team is doing fantastic work. Really outstanding. But the publishers over the next month. Surprise visit. You know how these things go. Sounds exciting. It'll be a shit show. I need you and your guys to crunch for the next few weeks. Obviously, we'll take care of pizzas, take away, whatever you guys need. You mean work overtime? It'll be good fun, won't it? The team hard at it, down in the trenches together. We'll keep any seven-day stints to a minimum, but if you could have your boys free up the next few weekends, that'd be great. Hang on. There's no way I'm working weekends for a silly computer game. Jack, the company expects it of you. And you don't want to let the others down. I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love the overtime pay, don't get me wrong, but... I can't give up that time right now. Overtime pay? You're getting a little off message, Jack. As a line manager, I need you to set an example. I'll set an example, all right? Bloody cheek. Don't raise your voice to me. I expect the team to pull together, to show some passion. Passion? I'll show you what you can do with your passion. Hey, Dad! Oh. Hey, John. Jack's got something to tell you. Yeah, now, now, before I go into details, it's important you know that a lot of your colleagues were really impressed with how I handled things today. Jack got fired. Tell me she's joking. No, 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 I didn't get fired. Uh, Molly, don't tell your dad that. OK, well, well, maybe I had to get a little bit fired. Told you. Between you and me, I think that Clive fellow overstepped his authority. I mean, I was just trying to give him some friendly advice. This is a disaster. It's all good. 
we still got my job, and no offence, but it pays better too. I'll sort your pay slip. Well... Uh-oh. Everything okay? Something go wrong? Fancy a beer. Shot of tequila, maybe. Wait. What? You got fired as well? Pretty eventful day, right? Oh, this is not happening. What a nightmare. Oh, but it was all gravy when you lost my job. Do you two need some privacy? Very cute. Okay, that's it. I'm going to demolish a cheesecake. Who wants some? I want two slices. Hey, it's my figure you're ruining there. A quarter? You'll get what's left, mate. The next station is Cobbett Square. Previously on Last Stop. Your Wendy, right? I like your wedding ring. Did you tell your daughter I'm married? I don't keep secrets from her. He's a grown-up girl. Hey, Dad. What is this? Who sold these to you? Calls himself Spider. Very easy to find. We doing business or what? No more dealing. You're done. You've got bare bad things coming your way. That was good. <laughs> we really should do this more often. I can't do this again. I mean, give me a moment. I didn't mean right this second. No. This affair we're having. It's too risky. What, what do you mean? Come on. You didn't really think this was going anywhere, did you? So is that it? That's it. Okay, well, can I meet you for a coffee sometime? I don't know, this all seems a bit rushed. I need to get dressed. Okay, how are we doing? Am I late? Yeah, by like 20 minutes. An apology would be nice. Sorry. Work. Come on, let's go in. Hello, Dan. Mrs. Hughes. It's lovely to have a chance to talk to you both at last. It was getting late. I'd assumed you weren't coming. I'm so sorry. We were held up. How's Dylan doing, Mrs. Adelaide, is it? Tamara, please. Sorry, I think this is the first time we've met. This is my wife, Mina. Pleased to meet you, Mina. Dylan's progress this term has been good. He's blossoming into quite the artist. I can't believe some of the stuff he brings back from school. Sorry, I've got to take this. Mina, don't you think you could do this afterwards? I'm really sorry about this. It's quite all right. Okay, what were we talking about? Uh, well, as I was saying, Dylan has a, a keen interest in drawing. Sorry, Aww. that's me again. Mina. I'm really sorry about this. It's fine. You two continue. Well, I've never been so embarrassed. 
You're overreacting. Dylan's doing fine. You did a good job at making me look like a crap parent in there, though. Thanks for that. No, you're not a bad parent, Mina. You're just... You're never here to do any of it. When you are, I feel like you'd rather be somewhere else. For Christ's sake, Dan, it's my job. What do you want me to do? Quit and become what? A teacher? You think we can afford to live in that house on two teachers' salaries? Get real, Dan. I'm providing for this family. Don't throw that at me. I'm not asking for the world. I just want some extra help. I'm off. You can continue this on the way home if you want. I tried calling the office earlier. They said you'd left for the day. I was at an offsite. Receptionist didn't mention that. Confidentiality. Right. Sounds like you want to ask me something else. What's the point? You've always got an excuse. Can we go out? Eat your muesli. And then can we go out? No promises, not till that bowl is empty. Even the grey bits? Especially the grey bits. Can we go to the park then? Or maybe Mum would like to take you. Would you like that, Dylan? Yeah! Come on then. Thanks, Mina. Can I go on the swings? Of course. Mina Hughes, this is Harlequin. Please authenticate. Hughes 47 Alpha Tango. What's up? Amrit has left a memo here asking for your authorization on the Munich document. He's saying you must have forgotten. Can I have some I can't send it off without screen? someone's signature. Tell Amrit he can authorize this himself. He should know. I explained this to him on Wednesday. Mom, I tried reaching are you, you listening? Went to voicemail. We need this out today. Mum! Just a moment, Dylan. Look, forget it. I'll come by the office and sort this out myself. How about we get you home so you can watch some TV? But we only just got here. We can go to the park another time. I have to go to work. Oh, uh, you always say that. Fine, let's go then. I'm sorry, Dylan. Are you mad with me? What even is your job? Have a guess. I don't know, something to do with lying to people? That's not entirely incorrect. So, what is it? You're too young to understand. Why can't you just tell me? Fine. I work for a British private military security and intelligence company. My job is to monitor, support and execute orders for our investigators out in the field. The data is brought home to be analysed, packaged up and returned to the client, usually a government or private interest. How's that? That doesn't sound very fun. Ask me again in ten years and see if you still think it sounds boring. <sighs> Any ideas what you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a teacher, like Dad, and help people. <laughs> you can do better than that. What? Like you. What did you just say? Nothing. I just want to go home. Look, you've got your whole life ahead of you to figure out what you want to do when you grow up. I'm just trying to help you. Fine! I don't want to talk about it anymore. I want to go home.